Good morning. Good morning, saints. Welcome. Welcome to good morning, God. Good Israel. morning. We're studying Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 16 today, and we're on day 33. Appreciate you joining us. Appreciate you staying with us throughout this book of Ephesians. It's an exciting study, a great study. So we will be right back. Don't go away. we got plenty to talk about today. See you in a minute. Welcome to today's edition of God is Real, brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida, United States of America. We invite you to study the word of faith with us for undeniable proof of his name Israel, because God is real. Amen. He's very real. Praise the Lord. Welcome again, everyone. Watching God is real. My name is Pastor Chuck Kennedy. My beautiful wife, Arnold, beside me. We're so happy to come your way this morning. We're thankful and honored that you would allow us mm-hmm. into your space for a short time here, teaching the Word of God on the book of Ephesians. We're in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 16. And if you've been with us for the last month, um, including uh, August, then you have. Uh, been from day one of Ephesians 1 and now we're in the fifth chapter and soon we'll be done Mm -hmm. so we're in the 33rd day and it has been a wonderful exciting study of who we are in Christ and the authority that he has given and granted to us the church of the living God praise God so we're going to talk about that this morning. Who do we have online with us here, Arlen? Let's do for Christ. Good morning. This is our Charlene and Brother hey, Cliff. Clifford, Good morning. Charlene, God bless you. Yes, amen. Uh, Sister Adrian also. Good morning. Adrian. Grandma Adrian. Yes. All right. How's that baby doing? <laughs> also, Sister Rhonda. Sister Rhonda, happy Monday. Amen. Edie Kennedy. Good hey, morning. Brother. Edie. Good morning. Yes, good morning. And also, uh, Jordan Grinsley, good morning. Hey, Jordan. Blessed day. Somehow we missed Jordan on Saturday. We didn't get to see him. Yeah. But anyway, we love you, brother. And also, the the Miles, good morning to Brother Duke and Sister Judy. Good hey, morning. Judy, Duke, God bless you. Thanks for being on with us. Yes. Praise the Lord God is great. Hallelujah. So let's see what our scripture verse says today. Okay. Um, Ephesians 5.14, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give, give thee light. So this is the theme for the study today, and actually Fridays in the last couple of days. Uh, these scriptures that we've been going over in the fifth chapter here are summed up in this. Awake those who sleep. It's talking about to the church. Arise from the dead. So sleeping here in scripture is closely connected to someone dead. Why? Because you don't move, you don't do anything. You're you're not you're just asleep, you know. It's, it's very similar to death. And Christ will give you life. He will he wants to wake you up so that you can see and perceive things from his point of view. And there's so many today that are not getting that and that are walking dead. We're going to talk about it because that's what that's really, really big statement of that today. And we're going to talk about that. So stay with us on that. We want to uh, want to go over it. Who else we got online? We got a few more joined. Oh, Sister Sandra, good morning. Sandra. Yes. She was praying with us this morning yeah, on the walk with yes, me. Yes, thank you. And also uh, Brother Frank. Frank, Grover, Frank's out of the hospital now. Thank God for that. Yes, Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have a... And also, Amy Herna in the Philippines. Amy, God bless you. Yes. We saw Ann on Saturday, too. Mm-hmm. She is doing well. She's doing well. And uh, she was having her lunch. And uh, <laughs> so she was eating, and she was sitting up, mm-hmm. and talking with us we just had a wonderful time yes we love and Zen very yes, much and so uh, keep her in your prayers though mm-hmm. uh, still recovery there she's in rehab and still a lot of recovery there but yes. but god 
Amen, amen. That's fluid. Nothing needs to, needs to go. Needs Nothing to go. is too hard yes. for God. The fluid must go from her. In yes, Jesus' in name. name. Her heart works normal. In, in the Jesus name of Jesus, name. amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Be healed. Nothing Jesus. too hard for our God. Yes. Great she spirit. will come out from that with, uh, with her great testimony. A great testimony, yes. yes. And we saw mm -hmm. Pastor Brent in church yesterday. He's doing much better mm -hmm. too. Yes, amen. So we got lots of them on the recovery here. We thank God for that. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Amen. Hello to Joshua Window. God bless you. In from Kenya. Kenya, yes. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining, Josh. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. So let's read the entire verses here. And then we're going to talk about them, Marlon. In Ephesians 5, 11 through 16. Okay. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Uh, see then that he walk circumspectly circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil the days are evil redeem the time because the days are evil yes they are all right so we're going to talk about that uh, i want to see what georgia has to say about it and then we're going to dig deep into it today hello to rhonda there and rhonda says praise god for all recoveries yes yes hallelujah amen. so Arlen, let's uh, let's read what Georgia has to say, please. Okay. Hold on. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is great. Amen. Okay, here's Georgia. This is something a person has to want, and that is to get close to God. Without that desire, they fit into this evil day and uh, church church age. We are in cold Laodicea, lukewarm. They seem happy, not striving to shake off the world they are dabbling in. Yeah. And there are reasons. There are reasons the Bible tells us to not do this and don't do that. A darkness will always be brought to light. Do you? Do you might think you are getting by with it, but eventually it will surface. Absolutely. These times we are in now, Christians need to be serious about our walk with the Lord and quit playing. Like it's okay to sin, thinking you aren't doing it a lot. Well, we should not be doing it at all. Only by choice do you do you quit and want to please God more than self. Uh, goes back to is God Lord over your life or is it you Lord over yourself? Jesus must be Lord. Yes, Amen. Not just your Savior, He must be Lord. He must and be Savior. Yeah. In full control. Mm -hmm. It's a personal relationship. You know, a lot of people think, well, you know, the Bible is full of do's and don'ts and rules and regulations and laws and this and that. And uh, so they they say, well, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to live that way. I don't want to live by a bunch of rules. And so I don't want a bunch of rules in my life. Yeah. But you know what? When you come to Jesus, you love Him so much that it's not rules and regulations. It's not yeah. doing this and doing that. You're just concerned about what you can do to please him. And you don't want to offend him or to hurt him. When you realize all he's done for you and paid for you, yes. your love just uh, ex repels against anything that would be negative to him. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not the do's and don'ts like of a legalistic yeah. abiding by the law. It's out of a heart of love and thankfulness to yes, the Lord yes, yes. that we love to live righteously for him because we desire to know him and please him. Okay. Hallelujah. The other day, um, Morillo, brother Morillo. Yeah, Mario Morillo. Yeah, Mar Mario Morillo. He said... Um, That's got to be Italian. If Jesus, <laughs> if Jesus is only your savior... And not Lord, you are never you are never saved. Yeah. Can you say about that? I would say if you say right. only we asked that question here before and we yeah. got different responses on it, but I believe he must be Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. 
He, he saves us, but in order for us to walk in that salvation, we must make him Lord. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that. He must be Lord. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah. Brother T is on. Hallelujah. Brother Hello, Brother T. Yes, God amen. bless you, sir. Mm -hmm. And Sister T, good morning. And Sister T. That would be my Sam's lady to see her. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. God bless you, Scott. Pray you're all doing well. Good morning also to the Millers. The Millers. Sam and Sister Tess. Yes. From yeah. Peru, Illinois. I'm thinking Peru. Peru. Are you in Peru? Did, did you, you guys go down to Peru for some reason? Oh, wow. But it's Peru, Illinois. Illinois. He's back on the road. Yeah, hey, what do you, you know? Lord. Thank is so you, Lord. Lord. Praise God. That yeah. Got that truck moving. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. wonderful. And, uh, great word, Georgia. Charlene said, great word, Georgia. Amen. Georgia's going to be with us coming up here in October, uh, around the first or second week of October. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we'll have her own. So uh, you'll get to see her in person. She's been writing comments the last seven or eight years with us mm -hmm. since the beginning yes yes and uh, so you'll get to meet her in person and she's a blessing praise god um hello to the vances they just yes good morning in Orlando and nina Beverly. so let's jump in on this today arlen we're going to go right into ephesians 5 11 and uh, try to move through this so i don't keep them on here all day yeah go ahead and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them Ephesians 5, verse 11. So, he's telling us here that uh, we're not to commune or friend or partner with the world. He calls it the unfruitful works, meaning they don't accomplish anything. They're vain. Unfruitful, meaning they don't bear any good fruit. And so... Uh, Note here that the works of darkness are called unfruitful, um, meaning that they're no good. Why would you waste your time? Some people think they waste their time going to pray or going to church, but it's the opposite. You waste your time doing unfruitful things. And so we're not to fellowship or commune or be a part of them. In fact, it says here we're to reprove them. So I want to go to the Blue Letter Bible, our friend over here in the Blue Letter Bible, and break down some of these words here. So this is uh, Ephesians 5.11. So let's look up some of these words here and, uh, and have no fellowship. Let's see what fellowship is. All right. You want to try to say it before I have him do it? No. <laughs> Strong's G4790. Sukoinonio. 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 It's used only three times in the Bible. Mm -hmm. To have fellowship with once, communicate with once, and be partaker of once. To become a partaker together with others. Or to have fellowship with a thing. So remember in, in this verse, he said, we're not to become a partaker with the unfruitful works of darkness. Or to have communion with or friendship with, which is not a new teaching in the Bible. I mean, it's throughout the New Testament. And uh, it, uh, Strong says to share in company with, co participate in, mm -hmm. communicate, have fellowship with, be partaker of. Pretty interesting to note here in these three verses it's used in. Of course, our verse there, Philippians 4 19, read that. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. So there's the, our word fellowship. Mm -hmm. And then Revelation 18, 4, which is even more uh, important here. Look at this. Let me just put it on this one. I put it here. Mm -hmm. And I heard about uh, another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And that you receive not of her life. So this word here, partakers, is that word fellowship. Mm -hmm. That is in Ephesians. This word here, fellowship. 
is that word. Partakers is that word here. So don't fellowship her sins. Mm -hmm. Come out of her, she says. So that you don't receive the plagues. What's a plague? COVID was a plague. Yeah. And uh, bubonic plague was a plague. There's been many plagues on the earth. So come out of her and you're protected. You're kept. Um, and so pretty interesting here that uh, that word fellowship means that. Let's get rid of that. Go back here. All right. So let's go back here. If I can find it again. There we go. Uh, unfruitful. Let's see what unfruitful means. All right. Let's read what he says here. Strong's G175. Akarpas. 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 Okay. Means unfruitful without fruit. And uh, without fruit, barren, not yielding what it ought to yield. That's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Strong says uh, barren, literally or figuratively, without fruit, unfruitful. Well, means here the unfruitful works of darkness, meaning that the works of the devil of sin, of the mm -hmm. sin nature, are totally without fruit, without good fruit he's talking about. Mm -hmm. In other words, they, there's nothing good about them. It's vain. It's vanity. Mm -hmm. Why would you waste your time with it, it is the question. All right, so let's move to the next. Uh, but rather reprove them. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's go to darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness here. Strong's G, 4655, Skatas. 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 All right. What does that mean? Well, it's used 32 times, but it's every time used as darkness. That's not a difficult one, then, is it? So read those, Arnold. Night darkness, of night darkness, or of darkened eyesight or blindness. Okay. Of ignorance. Okay. Respecting divine things and human duties, and the accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with their consequent mis misery. That's in pretty rough there. Mm -hmm. Darkness of ignorance, respecting divine things and human duties, and the accompanying ungodliness and immorality mm -hmm. together with their consequent misery in hell. Wow. Last one. Persons in whom darkness becomes visible and holds sway. So the uh, Strong's here from the base of G4639, shadiness, obscurity, literally or figuratively, darkness. Not something you want to have anything to do with, but rather you're to reprove them. So what does reprove mean? What, is, what are we to do to them? So here is in Strong's. Strong's G1651. Eleg ho. Eleg ho. Eleg ho. Eleg ho. Eleg ho. All right. And that's used 17 times. Mm -hmm. Reprove six times. Rebuke five times. Convince four times. Tell one's fault one time and convict one time. Mm -hmm. To convict, refute, confute, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted. By conviction, to bring to the light, to expose to find fault with, correct, by word, to reprehend severely, chide, admonish, reprove, to call to account, show one his fault, demand an explanation by deed to chase and to punish. Now look at this. This is talking about rather reprove them. Now note that here. To call to account, show to one his fault, demand an explanation, or to chase and or punish. So here, Strong says, uh, uh, to continue, admonish, convict, convince, tell a fault, rebuke, and reprove. Very interesting. So let's read it again. Read that scripture again. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So here he's telling you, don't partner up with vain works of the devil, of the world system. It's very clear. But in fact, correct them. 
call them to account. In the political world today, that some people say, well, why do you talk about politics? You're a pastor. Talk about the Bible. Well, I am talking about the Bible when I talk about the evil that's being done. Mm-hmm. I talk about good. I talk about evil. But I bring out and bring to account evil to protect people from going head first into that evil uh, yeah. like a, a, a sheep to the slaughter. So that's why we talk about these things to we, we're supposed to bring them to account to say these are wrong mm. don't do them or if you do choose to do them there's going to be very definite repercussions even death and eternal death if you continue so let's move to the next one ephesians 5 12 for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So this here is interesting. It's giving the um, uh, the impression to me. Let me read it here. Um, out of the Common English Bible, read that. That might make it a little plainer. Okay. It's embarrassing to even talk about what certain persons do in secret. So here. It's a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. That's kind of like there are lots of evil going on. We know about the evil. Mm-hmm. We know that things are happening bad, but we don't go into detail about what's happening because number one, take sexual sin, homosexuality. It would be embarrassing to even bring it up. Mm-hmm. It would be uh, shameful. It would be not something people want to hear or visualize. You think in word, I mean, in pictures. Mm. So when I speak to you and describe it, like if I say a, a big black dog with white spots on it, then you see that dog because you think in pictures. So it's saying here that uh, it's better, it's a shame to speak of those because people see that in their mind and they're left with those visions that are evil and wrong and embarrassing. They're, they're just evil. So here again, he says in common English Bible, we'll read that on it, please. Okay. It's embarrassing to even talk about what certain persons do in secret. So we don't even we don't want to, you know, have a discussion on that because it's embarrassing. It's it's shameful. It's it's not something especially, you know, you don't want kids to hear this and stuff. So that's what he's talking about there. It, it's so bad. That you don't want it on you. You don't want pictures of it in your mind. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, Ephesians five thirteen. Okay. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Okay, so all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So that's kind of a King James talk. Let's go here to Evangelical Heritage Version and read that same thing. Okay. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. So that's a lot plainer and easier to understand that. Read this again. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So what he's saying is the light exposes Mm -hmm. everything. When you turn on the light, you can see. In the dark, you can't see. But in the light, you can see. So when you get the light of Christ, then you can see right from wrong. You can see light from darkness. You can see good from evil. And you're able to determine, discern right from wrong to stay out of trouble. So he said... When you have the light of Christ living in you, the word of God abiding in you, then everything exposed by that light. So now you have a different view. You have the view of the mind of Christ to be able to determine right from wrong. And there's a tremendous amount of deception flooding the world system right now. It's gigantic proportions. The media is full of propaganda and full of uh, their views and convincing you to go their agenda. Uh, 
and then uh, the internet, if you search on Google or on Yahoo, they skew that to where they show you what they want you to think about it, mm. not the real results of your search where everything comes up. Yeah. Think about this, saints. But the light of Christ makes these things visible to you so you can navigate without getting in trouble mm. on the earth. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it also shows you visibly the evil, the darkness. It makes it that you know it's dark mm. and it repels from you. Hallelujah. So let's read on here. In the worldwide English New Testament, read that, please. Okay. But when the light shines on something, it can be seen. Anything that shows up wrong ways is light. Exactly. Praise yes. God. Praise God. So, our original verse here, verse 13, read that again, 13, please. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. All right. And then we read it out of the evangelical heritage. Read that, please. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. Becomes visible. You now can see as the Lord sees. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. For it is the light that makes things visible. It's the light of Christ that brings it to light. Go ahead. But when the light shines on something, it can be seen. Anything that shows up wrong, uh, wrong ways is light. Okay, so the light, when it shines on something, it shows you. And it will show you right from wrong according to God's vision. The way he sees it. And that's what we have mm -hmm. to line up with. So here we see in Psalm 119, 105, a common scripture. Okay, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what he's saying. The word, Hallelujah. the light, is our light to yeah. see and navigate in these evil times mm -hmm. that we live in. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All right, another one on that in John here. Okay. Uh, verse 9, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the light in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. So again, showing you that we are to walk by God's light. This is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're seeing things by the world's view, which is unfruitful words. We see these things and we go with their opinions. And then we're going, moving in darkness with mm -hmm. unfruitful works that bring about a very bad end. All right. One more. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Thank hey God. Thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah. that we follow you and we don't yes. walk in darkness anymore. We're not Thank deceived you. by the world. We're not fearful and afraid of their latest pandemic. Yes. Thank you. Lord. We're not afraid of the monkeypox. We're not afraid of COVID. We're not afraid of these things. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we know better because we have the light of Christ directing us, showing us right from wrong, showing us his way. Praise him. All right. So let's go to Ephesians 5, 14. Okay. Read that. Over. Wherefore he saith, awake thou, was, thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. So, Wherefore, meaning in light of what we just said here, that these things are approved by, by the light made manifest. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he said, let that light wake you up. Yeah. Awake now that sleepest. Arise from the dead. Christ is giving you light. So, this is the point of these verses. This verse here is the summary of them. Uh, it is the summary of the verses talking that have been telling us to live right. Um, to follow Christ and not live in darkness. Get out of darkness. Uh, so the Bible defines this here 
when you're living incorrectly and calling yourself a Christian, it defines it as being asleep. Mm -hmm. And it even likens it to being dead. You see it there? Awake thou that sleepest. Then he says, arise from the dead. Because even if you're not yet totally dead, if you're asleep, you're like you're dead. Mm -hmm. And so you can view that either way. But obviously, ultimately, if you sleep, and you don't wake up, you'll die. So uh, it's pretty bold here. He said, wake up from this. So what happens in the morning when the sun shines through the window or somebody turns a light on their room and you're sleeping? Well, it wakes you up, mm. right? So this is the picture here is the light of Christ yes, yes. shining on a sleeping child of God. And you awake. Because the light has shined on you. Say, hey, I was in a stupor there. I was deceived. I was headed the wrong way and didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. And so this is the word for the church today. Wake up. Come yeah. out of that sleep. Yes. Wake up from the dead. Let the Lord give you the light that directs your path, lights your pathway. And keeps you on the right track with him. All right, let's read it from this translation here. The Disciples' Literal New Testament. Okay. For everything becoming visible is light. Therefore, he says, awake sleeping one and rise up from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. Notice how this one combines the last verse here with, with this one here. So... Everything becoming visible is light. Therefore, he says, mm -hmm. wake up, sleeping one. Mm -hmm. Rise up from the dead. <laughs> and let the light of Christ shine on you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Good morning to Natalie Amon. Yes, Bonnie's granddaughter. Bonnie's granddaughter. Well, it's great to have you. We love Bonnie. Good morning, so Natalie. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, what's... Bailey said there. Sleep is the cousin of death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And over here. Okay. Um, the Christian walk is easy. We just love the Lord, the Lord God, with all our heart, yeah. mind, and soul, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you go into a dark room and turn on the light switch, Darkness automatically lives, but in our Christian walk, and even though we have the light of Christ, darkness doesn't automatically live unless unless we repent. Yeah, so he's got a question mark there. Oh, okay. It's a question mark. So, but in our Christian walk, even though we have the light of Christ, darkness doesn't automatically leave unless we, unless repent. we repent. Well, the light would, would shine on whatever's causing you to, then you see the need for that repentance would be the answer to that. Yes, you do still need to repent, but you, you you can't repent if you don't see it first. So the light is the element that causes you to see it. To to repent. And then what you do with it is up to you, but obviously you should repent. Exactly right. Very good point. Because there's a lot of teaching today that says you don't have to repent. Well, you do have to repent. Absolutely. Or the or the Bible would just say it. That's exactly right. Praise God. So uh, here he's saying, wake up. The day is dawning. Light is shining forth. Yes. Okay. Recognize the time you're living in is what he's saying to us. See, sin is sin. Mm -hmm. See it as God sees it. Arise from your sleep or your death and from your nothingness or unfruitfulness and begin to live, live for God, worship him, love him, be effective in your life and in others around you on earth today. And that's what he's telling us here. Hallelujah. So in Isaiah, he says that too. Let's go there. Okay, Isaiah. 61 through three. Arise, shine for the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall 
arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and king, kings to the brightness of thy rising. So that was prophesied of the Lord many years before he came. And it's telling us here what we just said. Wake up. Church, wake up. Recognize the evil times you are living in and get with God's way, God's light, instead of the unfruitful works of those who are siding with darkness mm -hmm. and with sin. Mm -hmm. Hello to Janet Hess out there. Hello to Janet. Good morning. So we move on. Ephesians 5.15. We're running yes. out of time. See, see, I mean, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. See then that you walk circumspectly. Let's go to another translation here to kind of see what that's saying. There we go. Okay. This is the Amplified Bible Classic Edition. Mm -hmm. Look carefully, carefully then how you walk. Uh, live purposefully and worthy and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people. All right. Okay. So here, back here, this circumspectly. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to dig into it deep, but I'll just tell you, it means diligent, accurate, or exactly. And then the fools here, this word for fools is only used once in the Bible. And it's the same word as unwise, unwise. Okay. So see then that you walk circumspectly or diligently, accurately, and exactly as God's light gives you light and shows you the way not as fools or unwise mm -hmm. bringing death but as wise wow Hallelujah. hello to davika in to canada yes. praise god in? you have a wonderful vacation canada there. good morning so she is good morning right yeah now. she's good morning with yes. us all right so let's read this from the expanded bible so be very careful how you live, walk. Do not live or walk like those who are not wise, foolish, but live wisely like those who are wise. So somebody would say, well, you're preaching works, Pastor. You're preaching a works gospel. You call it what you want. It, 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 it's up to you. You call it what you want. Mm -hmm. But the Bible is very plain. It's yeah. very plain. If you live like the devil... You'll suffer the devil's fate, mm -hmm. eternal death, damnation, separation from God. But if you live and walk like the Lord in the light of his word and his love, then you'll enjoy all his benefits. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There is no explaining away sin mm -hmm. to God. Hallelujah. So if, if you go into these vain works and your mind reasons them away that you're okay and that you're right. Uh, you might, your mind might excuse you from these sins, but God will not. That's vanity. That's vain. And the problem is you want to correct that before you get there so that you don't have to have his wrath and correction. Wake up. Rise up from the dead yeah. or spiritually asleep and be the church that God has called you to be. Praise Amen. God. All right, let's go to the next. We're out of time here. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So this is the reason he's telling you these things, because you live in a day mm -hmm. where it's very evil. And you need to make the most of every moment. Every moment counts. Every day counts. Redeeming the time. Don't don't allow yourself to be caught up in the vanity and unfruitfulness, but redeem the time. Make use of it. Bear fruit for the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, buy back the precious time that Jesus has paid for for us mm -hmm. so we can live. So Colossians follows up on that. What's he say? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. It's very late. 
in the in the season of this. Mm -hmm. And the last one, Romans 13, 11 through 14. Okay. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Uh, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in being, but put, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Wow, that's right. Praise mm -hmm. God. What does Andrew say there? Wake Wake up, buttercups. <laughs> okay. That's right. Okay. What does Brother T say? Uh, the days are evil. Very true of our current day. It's not even hidden. No. Yeah, it would take yesterday. Uh, President Trump was enjoying a meeting, you know, friends, family, and playing golf. Mm -hmm. I don't know what all they were doing there. But anyway, on his golf course... And some insane person driven by darkness and unfruitful works set up with an AK-47 and binoculars in the bushes yeah. to try to kill him. Yeah. And the, you, the guy, I forgot his name. He gives his name, but I forgot his name. Anyway, he's 58 years old, and uh, he uh, works for the government in Maui to rebuild um, places there, I guess, from the destruction that happened back whenever those things burned up the homes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he's there working in that, or it's supposed to be, and he's a government guy. And not that the government commissioned him to do this, but this that he worked for government. He's very much a Democrat and very much hated his website. He hates everything that Trump stands for. Mm -hmm. And obviously, so much so, that he acted upon it and tried to kill our wonderful President Trump. And mm -hmm. so uh, the days are evil. They're very evil. And Scott's right. They don't even try to hide it. They just come out and tell you. Look at the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Do a little study on what they're proposing, how they want to lock you up in 15-minute cities and put digital currency on so they can know every dime you spend and control by governing every dime you spend sanctions against your money and they want to uh, uh and they're not they're not even quiet about it they're out no. in the open yeah. that they want to do these things to you and totally change the way you live that's why you're in what you're in right now is that they're trying to change before your eyes what you live in and they say well there's going to be some adjustments it's going to be a little difficult for a while but we'll make it through and it'll be better because they're trying to restructure our entire livelihood and they don't hide it. But if you're not in the light of Christ, you won't see it. You may even join up with them think, Oh, this is great. I love it. It's green, man. Let's be green, green garbage. That's all stuff built to cause you to follow their agenda and to put you in fear. They, they rule by fear. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the light of Christ, you don't see these things. You just go dumbly with them. And then it, it, it before you long, just like the mouse eating the cheese, before long it it chops his head down because free food. You want free food, free food, boom. Yeah. He's done. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's that's what they're doing. The devil is doing to the world system today. And you're in the midst of it. You live in the time of it. You didn't ask to be born now and to be in this, but you are. And it's actually a great honor and privilege because the end of the ages is coming together before our eyes. It's time to wake up and see as Christ sees, not as the world sees anymore. Hallelujah. We've had a few comments come in. Thanks, Brother T, yeah. for, for doing that. Uh, what's Brother Duke say over here? Okay. Um, it's amazing that Paul wrote Ephesians in first century AD and times were evil then just like today church rise up and get rid of darkness and live in the light of christ amen 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 that's right mm -hmm. it is amazing that, that god sees then and now i mean he sees it all yeah charlene 
Just like a sheep going to slaughter. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It's mainly something. Really. God's force of head waving nature has put the fire on me to resensitize me, having me delight in having a repentant heart and has turned the on switch within every room inside of me to see what has to be taken out. Praise God. After being made the light of man, I haven't took off the armor. Uh, not, now devotion, personal fellowship, gen regeneration, and excellence from his signs and wonders of above tumbles out, bubbles up, and springs forth daily. The glory is not mine. God is just to real. Hallelujah. He Good word, Bailey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's see here. Uh, Andrew Vance says, amen. We're out of time. I want to let you know that we're still working on getting the uh, system repaired. We thought we had it yesterday, but uh, it did not go off after a walk with me. I had to delete it. So this one here may or may not show up on Facebook. You can go to the website and find it. You can watch it on Roku TV or Fire TV um, but and Rumble. But it may take us a few hours to get it up back on Facebook through Rumble. Uh, if it's not on, if you don't find it there, it means it didn't go off. We had to do that. So we're working on it and we we got it fixed in Jesus name. We believe, yes, yes. but uh, you pray with us. Mm -hmm. Satan's attacking us on this, trying to keep it from going the 24 hour feed mm -hmm. and uh, where others can watch it too. So we appreciate it. We love you all. We're out of time. Yeah, yes, I look forward so to seeing much. you. Yeah. Talk more about these things tomorrow. Tomorrow again, same time, 5.30 in the morning. God bless you. Thanks. Bye-bye. You have been watching God is Real, airing weekdays Monday through Friday at 5.30 a.m. with Pastors Chuck and Arlen Kennedy. Brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida. If you would like to reach out to us, our phone number is 941-447-4538. Thank you so much and God bless.